And yes, okay, I know that I'm officially calling someone out on the internet, but please, um, he doesn't even know who I am. So no, okay, calm down, all right? I mean, there's less beef here than in a vegan's fridge. I mean, honestly, imagine going down to a Forest Green Rubbers match and trying to order a burger from a van. Yeah, you'd get less dirty looks than if you were spotted punching a child in the face. But yeah, okay, I'm not actually calling anyone out. I mean, I don't want to box a 51-year-old in the ring. I mean, let's be real. He's got amateur boxing experience. Um, he probably still bite my nose off in the clinch. But listen, Roy Keane. Yeah, he is Roy Keane. Keen to kiss Ronaldo on the lips. This is not the Roy Keane that I know. That we all know. Listen, the other day, I know I sort of shrugged my shoulders when I heard that Ronaldo had left his seat on the bench. I mean, to me, it was 89 minutes gone on the clock. Yeah, maybe he needed to use the loo. I mean, I'm sorry, if I was trapped beside someone in the cinema, I don't care how good a film it was. I don't care if it was the final five minutes of The Usual Suspects. I'm not going to choose the Wii on someone's popcorn. So I'm going to leave my seat. But... I didn't realize that Ronaldo um, got in his car and went home. I mean, imagine even doing that in Sunday League. I mean, imagine coming in from a Blood and Thunder match in the mud and realizing that an unused sub had left. Oh, where's Charlie gone? Oh, um, he left five minutes before the end in his car. I don't care if his mum was hit by a truck. You do not leave a match early. How insulting to your teammates. And it gets even worse. He refused to come on as a sub, which is the ultimate football insult. And Roy Keane, a man who craves high standards, apparently. Um... Sort of thinks it's all okay. Oh, Gary, Manchester United players have done much worse things in the past. And then he gave an arbitrary example of Paul Scholes refusing to play a League Cup game in 2002. I mean, now he has a point. Scholes got off lightly with a two week fine, but the truth is that Scholes was still a monster player for the club. I mean, you might be able to get away with it then, but you cannot pull stunts like this when you're already on the bench. I mean, look at Pierre Bergabamyang last winter. I mean, if he was in blistering red hot form, then I think Mikel Arteta would have let the indiscipline slide. But. He wasn't. Last Christmas, he was well as much use as a bowl full of pig wee. So, he got the boot. I mean, last Ruben Israel left Old Trafford before a match against Charlton. And he never played for the club again. But the sad thing is, I know why Roy is so apologetic on Ronaldo's behalf. Because, last a few weeks ago, here he was giving Ronaldo a hug. I mean, Cristiano came over to Gary, then snubbed Carragher, and finally saw Keane for a chat. Listen, I know that Keane is a football legend. But bear in mind that the modern day version of Roy Keane is most recently a failed Ipswich Town coach and a relevant assistant coach at Aston Villa and Ireland and now often shares a punditry desk with someone who couldn't get into a team coached by Steve Bruce. Roy Keane is no longer the battling warrior in everyone's minds anymore. Now, he's now just an involuntary member of a comedy double act. You know, Sky Sports and in Deck. But I mean, on telly, right now, he's got the personality depth of that fellow who lives in the bins on Sesame Street. You know, the guy who looks like Shrek's sock. So to be noticed by a man with seven Ballon d'Ors. I mean, he's starstruck. But Ozzy, that was an awkward interaction. I mean, forget the Kara snub. Kane finished it by saying, See you, Ronaldo. With a clumsy thumbs up. I mean, this just shows how long it's been. Lads, do you reckon Ronaldo's actual friends call him Ronaldo? No, just call him Ronnie or Chris. I mean, that was the awkward, clunky goodbye from someone who's only been allowed to watch Ronaldo on telly for the last 15 years. I mean, it's a full three syllables. I mean, this is a bit like being one of the geeks in school. And then one day, the popular kid gives you his pen or maybe winks at you on the bus. Oh, then suddenly, I mean, uh, as a socially unpopular bookworm who has to practice kissing on his dog. Oh! Oh, then suddenly you'll die on the hills for this cool kid, right? I mean, even when the principal discovers that his locker is filled with bloody bludgeoned buddy rabbits, right? Oh no, you'll still tell everyone that you're his friend. And listen, I realize that Roy Keane was not the geek of the Manchester United dressing room. Um, clearly that was a spot reserved for Phil Neville. Oh yeah, probably used to spend his lunch periods eating sandwiches made by his mum and begging Juan Sebastian Veron not to give him a wedgie. But Keane, he is the geek now. He is the football dork. Because lads, he was a ferocious warrior as a player and commanded the respect of everyone in the sport. But after the failed managerial gigs, nobody in football takes him seriously anymore. I mean, he doesn't even have the respect of John Walters, a former Stoke and Burnley centre forward. But now, lads, Ronaldo is practically the last one to have shared a dressing with Keane who's still a player, who is still playing football. Everyone else just knows Keane as the grumpy old pundit. You know, the evil Santa Claus? The one who climbs on your chimney purely just to yell at your dog? And as I realise, it's very rich for me to call Keane a negative grumpy pundit. I mean, lads, I'm someone who puts the word joke in my thumbnail so much, you'd swear I was a clown with Tourette's. But honestly, I hate to say it, but the TikTok generation, they have no respect respect for Keane. This man is just a meme. They laugh at him, not with him. A bit like how, you know, they probably also throw eggs at the grumpy old man's house from next door. Yeah, they like to laugh at him from the bushes when they're watching him angrily scrub dog poo off his welcome mat. So seeing 
key and mumble, It's his job! On live TV. I mean, is that all he is now? Just aim a Dunphy with a catchphrase? Lads, Keane is a guy who earlier this year was being offered an interview for a job in League One. I mean, it was the same club who wanted him in 2006. It's just now they're in a much worse off place. So that's already a crushing blow to his ego. I mean, it's a bit like an ex-wife wanted to get back in touch when she's now since lost all her money and now lives under a bridge and has to brush her teeth with the fur of a stray cat. I mean, you'd be a bit insulted to get a call. So modern day Keane, he is delighted that Ronaldo still remembers him for being the lion that he was. But I mean, this reminds me of when Carlos Tevez refused to come off the bench from Man City against Bayern Munich. I mean, who was in the studio doing punditry on that Champions League night? And Mark Hughes. And he was so desperate not to offend his former player that he basically acted as an apologist, as if he's a PR executive on Tevez's payroll. I mean, it was tragic. It's not just that he that he previously worked with Tevez. Lad, Tevez was the greatest player that Hughes ever coached. I mean, he's probably got his face stable to his fridge. And considering Tevez looks a bit like the product of a goblin making love to a horse, I'm guessing that every time Hughes's wife reaches for the milk, ah, she suddenly loses her appetite. But still, I mean, Hughes wanted to be able to tell his grandkids about the greatest player he ever coached, right? And for them to still be on good terms. I mean, Hughes wants to have something to show for it. I'm guessing it gets a bit dull and tedious when he invites Robbie Savage over for Sunday dinner for the seventh time in a row. But it does take the shine off things if Tevez now hates him. I mean, it's like a former girlfriend of Brad Pitt telling her grandkids about the time she used to date a movie star. But again, I mean, it's less impressive if the grandkids then Google her name and realize that Pitt has a restraining order against her for sending him dead cats in the post. But, but I mean, come on. Hughes is now just a moldy old coach of Bradford City and looks a bit like if Mrs. Doubtfire had a nose job. So you just know that by now, he's probably got an entire Tevez his shrine in his lawn. Honestly, he's probably got Tevez pillowcases. He's probably rings this about four times a week. I'm sorry, but we've seen ex football pros turned pundits decide to die on a hill for their mates. I mean, last year, Gary Neville, supposedly a well paid tactical analyst, one of the greatest football mouthpieces in the game, no BS, right? And yet here he was, looking like he would rather lick dog sick off the carpet than dare to criticize Ali Gunnar Solskjaer, his mate. And as a result, I'm sorry to say, but his credibility took the biggest hit since he was Valencia boss. I mean, choosing to defend Ali in one breath and then turn up to join Ryan Giggs in court before doing an overlap in guitar. Oh, I'm sorry, but right now, people look at Neville as if he's the integrity of a shoe. But Keane, what are you doing? Leonardo Benucci and Giorgio Chiellini have criticized Ronaldo's behavior in the Juventus dressing room. And as soon as Gary brings that up, Keane bar Back. Oh, well, who knows if they're good characters? Has anyone shared a dressing room with them? Keen, with all due respect, what in the pig's left earlobe do you know about Ronaldo's behaviour in a dressing room? You haven't worked with him since he was 18 years of age. I'm pretty sure Cristiano has changed a lot since 2005. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was just a keen, shy worker bee in his teens. But I think five Ballon d'Ors probably change a man's ego for the worst. I mean, lads, I'm sure Chris Hemsworth was a gentleman before he made it. Was on the set of Home and Away. Oh, yeah, suddenly give him Marvel money for playing Thor. And I'm guessing that right now, He's probably a prima donna nightmare who probably has his waiter beaten in the car park if he dares to serve him an undercooked steak. Listen, Keane said that players like Ronaldo can sometimes deal with the end of their careers in the wrong ways. Oh, you're telling me? Keane was basically sacked by club and country within three years. Listen, falling out with Mick McCarthy is one thing in 2002, but almost the identical situation happening with Sir Alex Ferguson in 2005. I love Keane as a player, and I happen to think he was right about that World Cup. But let's be real, those were two dressing room meltdowns just three summers apart. Keane in his third Thirties was toxic too, so he's not the best one to be advising Ronaldo. Keane has not known Ronaldo since he's an 18 year old child. The same age as Justin Bieber during his British peak. I mean, it's a long time ago. I really like Keane massively appreciates Ronaldo for still remembering him for the legend that he was. But if you want to hang your hat on any current player and claim that you were an influence, then for goodness sake, make Jordan Henderson. Roy, you coach him as a little boy at Sunderland. I mean, you prepared him for his career, and he's since got on to win everything in sport, and being probably one of the greatest Premier League captains of all time. This guy is the model pro who upkeeps the highest standards, squeezing every last morsel of energy out of his career despite having probably the same limited talent as Keane. If you want to wax lyrical about a player, make it him. I mean, and Keane said, Ronaldo is still one of his best mates in football. Oh, I mean, for Ronaldo, old man Keane doesn't even make his BMO top 16. And yes, I realize that's an outdated reference because Bebo is 17 years of age and way out of date. But guess what? So is Keane's friendship with Ronaldo. Ronaldo is frozen in time in Keane's mind as a hard-working, shy little boy. I mean, last week on TV, he described him as a good kid. I'm sorry, a good kid? He's got a 12-year-old son. This is like an old woman wanting to find a kid at home alone and pinch his cheeks and offer him some hard candy. Yeah, he's 42. 
Well, Ronaldo, I'm sorry, but it's blatant favoritism. Can you imagine what Keane, the manager, would do with Ronaldo, the player? Imagine it back in 2008. Jibro Cissé had decided to get in his car and drive home before the end of a Sunderland match. I promise you, the next day in training, Keane would have probably thrown a brick of cement in his car before choosing to sack him on the spot. I mean, Keane likes to pretend that Ronaldo is the consummate example of professionalism. When it comes to doing what's right for Cristiano, absolutely. But for the team, the club, the fans? No. Does nobody remember when Ronaldo hosted a glittery 30th birthday party just hours after Real Madrid lost 4 0 to Atletico? That, I mean, back in 2004, if Manchester United had lost a derby match and Keane even caught a glimpse of Rio Ferdinand being spotted having a sandwich in the shop that night, oh, you're damn right, he'd have screamed in his face. Honestly, he'd have probably clamped his car. Those Manchester United players were terrified to go out if they lost a big match. So, this, shamelessly partying with Rihanna. No! Of course Ronaldo showed keen respect in 2004. I mean, he'd have been terrified of him. I mean, when I played football in Ireland, there was a guy on my team who was almost called Roy. I mean, his name was, was Rob, just a Y for a B. But yeah, he was a really tall, bald guy. I was scared of him. Like, imagine if John Joe Shelby was a foot taller and had Edgar David's goggles strapped to his face. Ah, oh, actually, I don't know. Comparisons to Shelby are a bit mean. I don't know. Paul Kincheski? Oh, wait, no, I put my foot in it there. What do you want me, lads? There's no handsome bald men. I guess I could say he looked a bit like Bruce Willis. If Bruce Willis had not eaten protein since he was four. I mean, this guy had the muscle strength of a cheese toasty. But still, he was scary. Sharing a pitch with him, uh, I'd sooner have shared a bath with Michael Myers. Every time I wouldn't pass the ball, he'd look at me the same way that a farmer stares at a pig minutes before he turns him into sausage juice. I mean, this guy looked like he wanted to strangle me there and there. Christ him up. It was only five aside. Listen, I want to stress, he was a lovely guy off the pitch, but a demon on it. So I get why Ronaldo was on his best behavior. But imagine, imagine now if I get arrested for, for weeing in someone's letterbox. Would I expect Rob, who is now a fully fledged journalist? Yes, a man who I haven't talked to in 10 years. Would I expect him to defend me in public? Uh, putting his integrity on the line to write a newspaper column about how I'm such a great guy? No, it's pathetic. I like Keen, of course I do. But to see one of the sports, most integral and brilliant attitudes, now just reduced to being a CR7 fanboy, it's all a bit sad. Listen, Keen, you don't need to do this. I realize that loyalty is a big thing for you. I mean, two years ago, he was asked to do an all time Liverpool Man United Premier League 11 alongside Jamie Carragher. And lads, because of his loyalty, he was close to picking Jesper Blomqvist on the wing over Sadio Mane. But Keen, you don't need to be loyal to Ronaldo. The truth is, you don't know Ronaldo. Not anymore. Fame and success change people. I mean, this is like someone who knew James Corden when he's just a grubby extra on Holly Oaks. Oh, lovely lad. Yeah. Really enjoys a pie, but no, great. And then suddenly being shocked when the quarter you knew is now berating restaurant staff until they cry. Lad, I commend Keane's loyalty. I mean, he's like the anti Ryan Giggs, but please, Roy, you don't need to clumsily die on this hill for Ronnie. Anyway, next morning, if you what do you think? And let me know in the comments how I got this all wrong. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you in a while.